just building on then um, from Aoife's work there in terms of what heteronormativity is and what homonormativity is, I'm going to look at, well, what are the, the critical concepts that researchers have used or what are the, the theoretical toolboxes as such that they've used to understand heteronormativity and homonormativity, but also different ways that these um, discourses can be challenged, okay? And then from that then, I'm going to look at, well, what is queer pedagogy? So in what ways can we apply this, um, these critical insights then to our work uh, with, the, with, our, with our students in hopes to preparing them for the complexities of gender and sexualities in their future workplaces? Uh, so first of all, what is queer theory? Um, the queer in theory, uh, in queer theory is not necessary, it's not a noun as such, it's more of a verb. So what I mean by this in a sense that the queer is not an identity, but a questioning stance, right? A cluster of methodologies that let us explore the taken for granted and the familiar from, the, from new vantage points. So in this sense, we're not only specifically talking about queer identities, but we're looking at the norm itself. We're looking at the heteronorm. And it takes its gaze towards this heteronormativity. And how can this be uh, destabilised or interrupted? So queer theory seeks uh, to disrupt and challenge traditional modes of thought and by standing outside them, examining and dismantling them. So the, the modes of thought there that we're talking about is, is what uh, Aoife had talked about previously. So heteronormativity, homonormativity. The, the links that to be natural and normal is to go from male to masculine to heterosexual, these presumptions that we make, and similarly female, feminine, uh, and heterosexual. And what happens when these don't connect, or their di diagonal lines are drawn through these discourses, not, not necessarily in a lin linear sense. Um, so it's different from the, from the work in terms of uh, specifically looking, focusing only on the margins, so homophobia. Uh, so it's an attempt to move away from psychological explanations like homophobia, which individualizes heterosexual fear of and loading towards gay and lesbian subjects at the expense of examining how heterosexuality becomes normalized and natural. Now, I want to make the point there that we're not denying the material realities of homophobia at all, but it's just another vantage, looking at it from another vantage point. Okay? So with homophobia, we have all these underlying presumptions that lead to this type of behavior or to lead to these actions. So take, for example, the work of C.J. Pascoe, who his, her work on Dude, uh, Dude, You're a Fag, how often when um, young boys were calling each other uh, fag, it was more to do with the fact that uh, boys were breaking certain gender norms, not in relation to uh, the sexuality itself. So I suppose the main goal, uh, queer theory itself um, doesn't like to be uh, given a definition because it denies categories, it denies these ideas of uh, identity categories. But just some core tenets that Hennessy discusses here. So deconstruction being one of them. So deconstructing uh, identity categories such as man, woman, heterosexual. Also um, interrupting these, so oppositions. So heterosexual and homose uh, homosexual are seen as oppositions. And then also wh what are the equations? So that gender is equal to, to sex or sex is equal to gender or gender in, is equal to sexuality. From, um, so then, well, how does this apply then to uh, our work with students? Or um, how, what is the relationship, I suppose, with queer pedagogy in terms of teaching and learning and these kind of conversations with uh, queer theory? So like uh, I talked about previously about queer being um, an act of doing rather than, uh, than being, queer pedagogy is not about teaching about queer identities and uh, the teaching and learning about queer identities, but more focusing on the norms. So uh, similar to the activity that we had in the beginning, what are the norms around? What are the different feelings we have? What are these different presumptions that um, underlie how we define sex, sexuality, gender, and so on? And it's, in, in essence, it's kind of how can we teach ourselves and our students to deconstruct what is there, what is not there, and the fact that there might be multiple there. So this idea of a social, so like we talked about uh, previously, about these things being socially constructed, and in what ways. And um, so not necessarily, when we look at, so above here it says, instead of focusing on the common concerns of teaching. So, you know, if we're, we're teaching in class, one of our main concerns is like, what do the students need to know? Um, 
Or similarly, how can I change their ideas about this certain topic? Whereas with a queer pedagogy, what we're looking at is, is what, not necessarily uh, what knowledge matters, but what's the matter with that knowledge? So how can we view that knowledge itself and interrogate that? And similarly then, we're looking at the roles between uh, teacher and learning, uh, teacher and learner, and how, how can we deconstruct then the idea of a teacher and learning and who teaches and who learns and this idea of it being a, a mutual engagement with student and not necessarily what knowledge we can bring, but also this unlearning. What are our affiliations to certain types of knowledges and how can we break that down? So I'm just going to talk just briefly, uh, similar to Aoife, in terms of what are my experiences of uh, queer pedagogy from my own uh, research and teaching experiences. And I suppose this first slide is, comes to mind when I think of my experiences of using queer pedagogy with third level and second level students. So this notion of silence. Approaching a topic and... It, it, it's as a teacher at the top of the room there is then how do you interpret that silence? And sometimes I think they're like this. Um, then others I think are like this. Um, I've had cases where I've had uh, just a, a whole classroom full of this face looking back. So what I suppose the po point that I'm trying to make is, um, you know, the role of the teacher and your role, if we attempt queer pedagogies with third level students, is I suppose dealing with that silence and working with that silence, but also how you interpret it. So when I, I began, I suppose the way I interpreted faces like this was almost like resistance as in th this has nothing to do with me. And sometimes it was. Sometimes I had discussions with... Um, with students who were becoming, uh, you know, training speed teachers who would say, well, this doesn't really have anything to do with me. This isn't part of my, my remit. And similarly, if we're in different workspaces, these are similar conversations that we could have in, across different departments. Well, why are we talking about gender and sexuality? What does that have to do with my, my future workplace? Um, but also, I suppose, uh, bringing it back to we were talking about moments of discomfort, but also discovery. That often some of the, the times that I've found that some of the students that look like this are those who come to me after class and say, wow, it really got me to think in different ways about different things. So it's also our own preconceived ideas about the students in front of us and what, what they're capable of thinking about or a different kind of, I suppose, in different ways that uh, our discussions kind of impact them. I'm going to talk now briefly and give you a few examples um, with my work with young people. So my research predominantly has been with working with 15 to 7 year old young people um, around how can we understand how heteronormative discourses work in their everyday lives and schooling. But also then we looked at uh, how can they be challenged and how can we interrupt them. So some of uh, my... I've, I've, that was from the last one. So some of my initial conversations uh, with the young people around how did they define sexuality? So, to, uh, say for Dan here, so sexuality is what you like to do to satisfy yourself. Okay, so linked to the uh, sexuality, linked to sexual activity. Uh, Pete here, it's whether you're gay or straight. So, again, we talked about these binaries. Or um, Anna there, uh, in terms of heteronormativity that uh, uh, Eva discussed earlier, sexuality is like reproduction and making babies. Okay, so sexuality is this, this heterosexual norm. But also, then, um, when I've approached sexuality, uh, talking about sexuality, Sean here talks, like, I don't have an issue with sexuality. Like, the majority of people nowadays, I'm like, they don't care if people are gay. It's everywhere, so everyone knows that it's important to respect gay people. So there was all, also conversations around uh, ideas of inclusion and equalities, but also like, oh yeah, it's not a problem anymore. Um, you know, we respect. So this idea of respect and inclusion. And also here, Molly, and you'll see Molly a little bit later, she talks about her school space as being um, quite open and safe. So we, we respect um, identities here, okay? Um, I also, uh, one of the tasks um, that we had was they, they, they split two, two big posters, one that said masculine and one that said feminine, just to get them to think about this, uh, this category of gender and, and what they think it is themselves. So if you see some under the masculine, you have um, handsome, smashing stuff. So this kind of ag aggression, um, sport and press up. So different types of interests that were uh, associated with gender. 
uh, the barbecue. Um, don't ask for directions. So again, these kind of these presumptions of masculinity. Um, with feminine, then we have hormonal or bitchy uh, makeup and hair. Again, links to different interests. Sensitive uh, fabulousness that I was told I was ta- they told me a lot about. Um, love hearts, um, smoking hot. But also, what I want to pinpoint here is also the the words that were. Two of the first words that uh, were on most of the po- posters were under masculine penis and under feminine uh, vagina. So this, automo- this link between sex and gender, okay? I suppose, what did we do then? So we, we tried to blur some of these lines and try to challenge some of these heteronormative discourses with the young people. Um, a point that I'll try to make here now as well, that some of these conversations were very, very similar to uh, some of the conversations that I had with third level. So in a sense that even though there, we're talking about young people, and I know this conference is about our own students, there were so many overlaps in terms of the conversations. So one of the activities in terms of uh, blurring lines was we looked at... Um, uh, a female to male transition, Kai, who it was a series of YouTube clips uh, documenting uh, his transition, his different feelings around it, different reactions from his friends, his family, and so on. And so in, in groups, uh, the young people watched the, the clips themselves and then discussed, I suppose, different, the different themes that came out of uh, the videos. So this is an example of uh, one of the conversations. So Molly. Yeah, see, like, I don't know, like, it's just an awful lot of effort. If he wants to be a boy, he should just pretend he is a boy. And Alex, yeah, but how can he just pretend? So your problem is you don't think he should be starting taking the testosterone. And Ron then, but he says he feels like a boy. Is that just not enough? But it's not like it's going to affect people if he does. And then Pete says, like, when he says he feels like a boy, does that mean that she fancies girls? Okay, so these, the kind of overlap between what um, Eva was talking about earlier. So this presumption, if you're a boy, then you're heterosexual, right? And what are these links? Um, and I said, well, if you listen in the video, he said he's attracted to girls, but that's not necessarily because he's a boy. So it's kind of challenging. How can we challenging these kind of presumptions with young people? And Pete's like, yeah, I never really thought about it like that. And then Molly, who you've seen earlier, who's told me that the, the, the school is a safe and open space, but how sometimes when we have these kind of discussions, how they can mask um, these underlying assumptions that queer pedagogy allows us to access. So, so he was already attracted to girls, so why can't he just be a lesbian like? It seems like an awful lot of effort. Okay? And I suppose I want to leave you in a similar light. So Nikki, in the same kind of... Uh, uh, discussing these tasks then with people, and I suppose the impact. So we talked about moments of uh, discomfort, but also how there's moments of discovery and how when we approach these different topics uh, with our students, you know, that sometimes these blank faces and sometimes this silence is a good thing, and sometimes it is impacting, but it's not necessarily about changing people's ideas. So I don't, I'm not presenting uh, Nikki's kind of comments here in terms of, oh, this changed their ideas about certain things, but it gets them, it might get them to think a little bit differently which is kind of the aim of uh, queer pedagogy itself. So I'll leave you with Nikki, who says, it gets you really thinking. You question us, and then the task makes us think about sexuality and look for it, whereas we never would have before. So again, whereas heteronormativity, it's kind of this invisible, this invisibility surrounded it. I see it everywhere now. I watched Mean Girls, which was one of her favourite movies, again the other night, and like I noticed some of the things you said, whereas before I didn't think about it or walking home after school, looking at people walking by, repeating some of the tasks, uh, it's crazy, isn't it? So I just kind of wanted to leave you with that kind of idea that there's, there's moments of discovery and discomfort, and hopefully we could talk a little bit later about your own experiences, and, and Kathleen will discuss uh, later as well. And so I just want to leave you with that. I think-